Dr. Yaya, just stop your sharing. Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm probably a little bit odd man out here because uh, I will be speaking about the, the role of 3D printing. It is as such not in the regenerative phase right now, but it has a potential of lot to do. And we are actually progressing in that direction. So I will share with you the, uh, my journey, you know, how we are progressing in this field of 3D printing. So we started 3D printing in way back in 2013 and we just published, you know, our experience in the form of review article just uh, uh, last, last year, the current status of 3D printing spine surgery. And I could say that when we talk about the, uh, the uh, 3D printing, there are some steps to excellence and we can divide these steps actually like digital templating, 3D planning, then we can move to anatomical models, then we can move to patient specific guides. And then with the further step ahead is a patient specific implants. And then comes the, the next step which is called the bio 3D printing, which I also touch, which is actually the field of the regenerative 3D printing. And if we can combine all these, these these attempts or all these steps into PAC system of our, your hospital and then you can integrate it and then it becomes an integrated workflow completing the full potential of having a 3D facility, 3D printing facility at your institute or in, at your um, um, hospital. So the, we all know that the, the importance of planning and if you don't plan properly then you are bound to fail and this 3D printing is actually uh, comes very handy when we talk about pre-operative planning. As orthopedic surgeons, we all, um, you know, have uh, gone through these uh, uh, x-rays and these uh, drawing boards and these, uh, um, uh, these um, scales and these, uh, these uh, markers to, to draw the, 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 the fractures and then uh, do the pre-operative planning. Uh, but now the things have improved. Now we, everything is digitalized and we can acquire the, uh, the digital images, then we can calibrate them, we can enhance them and the, then we can segment them. And then we can do so, so many uh, virtual things on them uh, as per the, the classical uh, this thing. Now the 3D pre-operative planning has actually enhanced uh, this uh, pre-operative planning. And this is like, you know, this is the proper CT scan you can see here. This is the, the coronal section. This is the, the, uh, this is the coronal section. This is the axial section and this is the sagittal section. And with this 3D printing actually you can see the whole virtual model and the whole fracture anatomy in front of you and then you can get all this these uh, photographs virtual uh, you know the fracture the, in front of you and you can even print it and then you have the whole thing in front of you and you can plan your surgery very effectively and this is the 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 example of, of importance of pre uh, pre planning uh, similarly in the spine also this 3d printing has enhanced our understanding as well as the execution of the pre-operative planning of the particular screw placements. Like this is just an example. You can 3D print uh, these vertebrae or these trauma. So you can understand the, the proper fracture anatomy of that region. And you can actually choose the, the amount of screw or the size of the screw which you're going to put as well as its best direction and the best placement uh, which you... vertebra. Now, when we talk about the, the workup uh, of these complex spinal deformity patients, we talk about various angles, um, we talk about the whole uh, imaging, we talk about x-rays, CT scans, MRI, DEXA scans, we always look at the other systems besides orthopedics like chest uh, problems, we'll also look at the other problems, but uh, these 3D printing, uh, these are the, just, you know, some of the examples of a very stiff spine and these 3D printed models actually become very handy. You can just make everything in front of you and then you can perform a surgery on these implants beforehand. So you can be sure about the implant placements and about the outcome that how you are going to perform the surgery. And also these, these, uh, these, um, uh, these 3D printed uh, models, they also helps us in understanding the, and also in helps in, in, uh, in maintaining the positioning of the patient on the operating table because these deformities, they sometimes are very challenging to, to properly place these patients on the operating table. Uh, and you can actually judge and you can, uh, beforehand, you can um, uh, predict the amount of paraphernalia needed to uh, secure position these patients on the operating tables. Now, coming to the next step, when we talk about the 3D printing is CAD and CAM. CAD CAM stands for Computer Assisted Designing and Computer Assisted Manufacturing. So here you can see that you can actually bring some jigs or the or the, the guides 
which you can, which can help you where you need to cut the bone or where you can place your screws or or the the implants like for the for the wrist uh, or the distal radius we have these special osteotomy as specific guides which can help us in planning the the deformity correction at these uh, these fractures now coming to the spine when we talk about these deformities these deformities they can be quite challenging and to treat them we treat them with the screws and in the rods uh, and the, this is the usual you know the pictures when you get and placing uh, pedicle screws uh, especially in these sort of deformed spines can be very challenging and we all know that we we actually aim for these sort of the thing that the screws they are perfectly into the bone and we don't see this is almost a blind procedure we just put it free hand by the feel of the hand but if the complications can occur you know if the screws they just go medial then they can uh, danger the uh, the spinal cord and the patient can end up with paraplegia or paralysis or if it is just a bit little bit lateral then it can go into the important vascular structure and the patient can die on the table itself so actually we have just a 3 to 5 or 3 to 6 mm uh, bony uh, window here through which we have to play the screws which are again uh, 5 to 6 mm in diameter so these have to be very perfect and very uh, challenging to be put uh, these screws so current alternatives are that we re rely on the the anatomical landmarks we use our surgical uh, skills we can also directly expose the pedicles we can use the ct scans or computer assisted surgeries or we can use the x ray based computer assisted surgeries techniques now so the paper in in 2009 uh, when the shang lu came with with this um, technique of uh, using these uh, jigs to put uh, screws in the in the cervical spine and we we developed this project uh, of the computer assisted patient specific drill guides for the spinal deformities with the help of the ct scans and 3d recon models and we got the uh, the dbt innovative young biotechnologists award for the same and the objectives were to develop a safe and low cost guides for pedicle screws to compare the accuracy of the screws placement with the conventional techniques and to set up a platform for patient specific instrumentation guides for the other orthopedic deformities so we developed a dedicated 3d printing facility we have this moje printed which works on the uh, fusion deposition modeling technique uh, so what we do we acquire a special sequence of ct scans and then we incorporate it into a specific software we use the mimix uh, 19 software now we have the further modification available so we separate each an individual vertebra bone in all the sections uh, on the on, on the on the on the on the virtually on the computer screen and then we make the 3d virtual model on the screen itself and then we project these cylinders with the help of the software on the on the vertebra so to see that the all these cylinders are actually inside the bone only and they are not outside or uh, inside uh, the bone and then we develop with the help of reverse 3d printing reverse uh, rapid prototyping we develop these jigs uh, on the basis of these cylinders and then we virtually check and validate these uh, these uh, jigs or the guides on to, um, we place these guides virtually on the on the vertebral model and then we check the uh, the accuracy of these these uh, these jigs and then we print them once we have validated them virtually then we print them so this is like the printing uh, this thing you can see that this is the whole vertebral model and this is the uh, the jig and then we place them uh, uh, them uh, like this is an example of of a of a patient very complex deformity congenital scoliosis you can see here and this is the ct scans you can see that there are so many abnormalities uh, so putting screws they can be very challenging in, in this uh, in this spine so what we do we we sterilize them uh, these um, uh, these uh, jigs on the operating table we number them according to each and level where we are going to put the screws and then we put these screws we put these jigs into the uh, onto the spine at the desired level and then we put our guide wires through these uh, these um, these uh, these uh, guides so you can see that how the direction of the pedicle is changing from one level to the another in in cases of these severe deformities and this is the the post operative x rays you can see that uh, we have achieved a very good correction in this patient and this is the pre operative and the post operative picture and after surgery we checked with the help of the ct scans the position of these screws and you can see the the perfection of the screws uh, uh, in these uh, ct scans the post operative ct scans these are some of the the patients which we operated with this technique this was again a very complex deformity and you can see that the pre operative and the post operative x rays and this is the the post operative uh, clinical picture the amount of correction you can see in a 22 year old girl again a very simple severe deformity and this again we we use the 3d printing and this is the pre operative and the post operative pictures you can see the the correction 
some more examples of very difficult corrections and the clinical corrections you can see here. And now we are getting more and more this thing so we can these deformities to a much greater level and to a much almost like a normal spine you can see here. Uh, and then we, uh, we actually compared all these data and findings as compared to the conventional techniques and primary outcomes were uh, the screw violation. We also looked at the other surgical measures and we could uh, see that the, the, the as such, the, the, both the groups, they were almost the same. We could put more screws in the 3D printing group because we were more confident about the anatomy as well as the, as the, the safety, safety of the procedure. Uh, we could also see the, the violation uh, of the medial and the lateral walls and they were significantly less with the 3D printing group. The surgical time was also less in 3D printing group because you, uh, you were uh, less into less dissections, you were less using x-rays, you were less using the, the, uh, the, uh, the anatomical dissection around, the, uh, around your surgical field. So the surgical time was much less and it was statistically significant. Uh, the blood loss was also less, but it was not statistically significant. And we also see, could see that the X-rays taken were very less in uh, 3D printed group. There were no neurological deficit in any of the, the, of, the, of the group. So the advantages are like these are patient specific instrumentation. When we are moving towards an era of precision medicine, so these are patient specific instrumentation. They come at the, the forefront of, our, of our, our fight towards this. Uh, they are low cost, safe and effective treatment for such a challenging problem. Your accuracy improves. The learning curve is quite short and there are less radiation hazards. There were limitations also. Initial cases take long time in designing. The soft tissue stripping has to be perfect so that these jigs, they, they sit perfectly on, on the bone. We always use them as an adjunct uh, besides our clinical judgment. And the cost of software is also a problem because it's a very, uh, very costly software. So the expected benefits of this technology is that we have a unique problem of plenty in India. There are high risk of complications with these surgeries. And if we can develop these patient specific drill templates, this could enable an average spine surgeon to treat these patients with much ease and safety. And it is also a benefit for the experienced spine surgeons as well. And it is a further platform by which we can extend this technology for other orthopedic problems, especially uh, the neglected problems, which are again fairly common in our part of the world. We could publish this in, in a very high impactful uh, journal, the spine journal, and this has been appreciated very widely. So basically we are putting navigation back into the surgeon's hand. The next step comes the, the use of 3D printed implants. Now, the, the, uh, now when we are able to, to actually uh, design these implants or the, replace the, the part of the bone as per the actual design of, of that area like if suppose there is a tumor or, or we need to take out the whole vertebral body then we can actually 3d print that segment and we can place uh, that implant there like this is an example of a, of a thoracic trauma in which the the whole of the thoracic vertebra was destroyed uh, and this this uh, this vertebral body replacement system was used for this thing this is uh, not my case this is from the from the literature uh, from the internet and then you can also see that we can use different parts of the, of the body to use these implants for, for replacements. People are also trying to use 3D printing for improved prosthesis designing and suitability for these people. Uh, and this is also an interesting case in which this child was, have, was planned for a bilateral hand transplant. And then they use a 3D, 3D templating for that, this child. And then they, come, they, come, they use this 3D templating uh, as a guide to, to choose the perfect donor for the hand transplant for this child. So this is again an interesting field uh, to go. And now we, we come about the actual global regenerative, uh, this thing, uh, the, the medicine. The 3D printing is evolving towards the, the, uh, the, uh, the bioprinting. Uh, so enhanced biocompatibility through biomimetics of nanotopography. So we are incorporating the nano uh, medicine now into this. And artificial grafts, they can be mistaken for real tissue if they look like tissue. So this the folding can be done with the help of the 3D printing. And the future of graft is basically to make these 3D printed scaffolds and then incorporate the stem cells into this 3D printed facility. Uh, so this, uh, the, so this, how we can design the rationally designed functional uh, tissue equivalents. And then once we have the scaffold, the cells and the, the, the tissue engineering, then we can apply them for clinical applications. This bioprinting is basically you can define as computer aided automatic layer by layer deposition, transferring and patterning of the, the biological relevant material. So these are basically still experimental. There are no clinical trials going on right now, but 
this i i hope soon it will it is going to be a reality looking at the potential of 3d printing which we have also witnessed so 3d printing promises to be a revolution especially in orthopedics and the patient specific applications they have opened a new era i can say that it is just the beginning